welcome to a brand new episode of All Things Honor. I am here. I am your host. It is Kimmy Sokol, and we are back for episode number 12 of Ring of Honor TV. And we're still back in Orlando. We're doing great. Ring of Honor is truly the losers in this whole new TV deal we got going on with Warner Brothers Discovery. Because AEW now has Collision, Dark and Elevation are gone, and Ring of Honor is still on Honor Club. But, besides all that, we had a pretty good episode last night, so let's get into it. So, we start off very interestingly, because we actually start off with a backstage interview, which is very different. And it is with none other than Ninja Mac and Willie Mac. We talked about this last week. This match was really good. Obviously, they did it because of their partner name, Star with Mac. So, Willie Mac says he's been impressed with Ninja Mac. He's never really met him before, but I've always been really impressed with him online. And he asked Ninja if he'd be open to being a tag team. Ninja says yes, and the Mac attack is back. So the constant theme for this episode was really just like focusing on the tag team division, which is very interesting, meaning that the Ring of Honor tag team titles are being defended on Dynamite, which then goes with my whole thing with Collision. Is they're like, oh my god, we're going to have this brand split. And I'm like... Tony Khan, my dude, you've been telling us we're going to have a brand split Ring of Honor for some time now, and you still have people from AEW coming down to Ring of Honor. So who's on which brand? What are we doing here? I'm a little confused. So I think we should, you know, fix that <laughs> before we get anywhere with this. <laughs> but yeah, our opening context, speaking of the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, uh, it was Ringo Loco, he's back, versus Ray Phoenix, and I would not be surprised. So the other thing, Sean Ross, I think came out with this last week, maybe two weeks ago, that a lot of the people you see on Ring of Honor, they're paid per appearance. None of them are really signed unless they're someone signed to AEW. So I don't know if that was really his plan. don't know if he's looking to permanently sign people to just Ring of Honor, but I do find that a little interesting. So my whole point with this was like, Gringo Loco probably may be signed down the line. I mean, he's only been used at Ring of Honor, but Tony Khan is very high on him. He said this publicly, so... Maybe. This match was great. This was such an, a fun way to open this episode because both these guys have had a rivalry on the indies for a while before Lucha Bros came to AEW. They have such similar styles. Loco continues his losing streak. I believe he's 0-3 now. Ray Phoenix picks up the win. But this is fine. I mean, Loco is really impressive. I think we saw that with his match against Vikingo. And... I wouldn't mind seeing him stick around. Maybe put him on an episode of Dynamite. Hell, maybe he'll be in Orange Cassidy's Blackjack Battle Royal, whatever he's calling that thing, a double or nothing. But this was good. Ray Phoenix wins. Goes on to Wednesday to hopefully successfully defend his Ring of Honor kicking titles. The Wingmen are here. Ring of Honor debut. And this makes so much sense. Like, they belong here. Like, they should stay here. I like this. Peter Avalon and Ryan Emmett said they're going to teach the Iron Savages a lesson and show them they're going to be a tag team to recommend in Ring of Honor. Now, I like this mainly because of the fact that I think Ring of Honor, now that Dark and Elevation are gone, now that they have Collision, is going to be a place where a lot of the younger talent really thrive. So, I think the great thing about this is you're going to see a lot of people that aren't really used go to Ring of Honor. Like, Abaddon returned on Wednesday for... I don't even know what they filmed that six-man tag, that six-woman tag for, to be honest, because Dark and Dark Elephants don't exist. Maybe they filmed it for Ring of Honor, and I'm just a little confused. They probably did. I'm not really sure. But, um, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if Abaddon's coming to Ring of Honor. I wouldn't be surprised if Diamante or Emmy... Sakamura. I wouldn't be surprised if those people make their way down to Ring of Honor. Just like the Wingmen. Just like the Dark Order. Just like a lot of the people that aren't really being used. Because it seems like that's the direction we're going with. And speaking of people that should be signed, I, I was, I've I been looking forward to this for a week. Actually, I've been looking forward to this ever since I saw this match. It was taped two weeks ago. My girl Maddie Rinkowski makes a Ring of Honor debut. Oh my god. I interviewed her earlier this year. She's just such a pleasure. She's just such a great person. Please sign her in some capacity. She's great. Um, she wrestled against Willow. Maddie had a great offense here. It was not just a squash match. Um, they very much made notice of, like, you know, she's one half of the NWA Women's Tag Team Champions. She also, you know, she trains with Thunder. And the babe with the power keeps her winning streak alive. Willow Nightingale gets the win, but 
I would keep my eyes on Rinkowski. A lot of people are very high on her. So I would keep my eye on her, eye on her because you never know. Maybe she'll be signed down the line. Next, we have Peter Avalon and Ryan Evans versus the Iron Savages. I still don't like they changed their name from Iron Savages, like from Bear Country to Iron Savages, because now I always get confused. And I'm like, who the who the hell are we talking about here? Um, and This match actually got a lot more time than I thought it was going to, because if you've seen what Avalon and Nemeth have done on Dark and Dark Elevation, it's mostly been squash matches. Their matches have literally been like three minutes long. And this match got like... 10, 15 minutes and they were able to hold their own obviously they're trying to build the iron savages up like i said earlier this whole episode was just the tag team division tag team division tag team division. and i'm like what are we doing with the tag team division <laughs> we're gonna have another ladder match which i would not mind because the, la- the ladder match card of honor was great um iron boulders are now 2-0 so they're climbing up the ranks. See, Ring of Honor is a place where we should have rank. I feel like it actually mattered here because everyone always mentions everyone's undefeated streak. So I feel like if we're going to bring back the rankings, they could uh, they could do it here. Next, we had another tag team match. Cole Carter and Zach Clayton versus Matt Seidel and Christopher Daniels. So I'm starting to have a low-key problem with Christopher Daniels. And I mean a very, very low-key problem because I very much understand the fact of why Daniels is on like tv because he's gonna train all the younger guys and that's fine but it's the fact that like he's wrestling every week it, it's like it's like very similar to like how people complain about jeff jarrett right like obviously daniels and jarrett are two different people and i actually don't mind seeing jarrett on my tv every single week because i understand it's like helping the younger talent but it's the fact that like we literally not only saw him here but we saw him in a segment later on in the night and i'm like um do you do is it this is this really what we need to do so i'm having a very low-key problem with christopher daniels but that's just that's the point um this match was fine i mean obviously that side alan daniels are former ring of honor tag team champions so that was fun to see they won poor cole carter <laughs> next my girl miranda alizé Oof. so if you've been a long time fan of this channel you know that i heavily covered that ring of honor women's championship tournament where miranda alize was made all the way to the finals it just came up oh so short to roxy this match to me screams like this is the future of the ring of honor women's division like these two women should be signed she faced lady frost lady frost actually got the win which i was really surprised about because i thought they were gonna get Mar- they were gonna let miranda win so i'm starting to think here that again obviously a lot of the people that you do see every single week are not signed I'm starting to think that maybe just maybe they're gonna want to use lady frost a little bit more so i would keep my eye on this this match, again, got a lot of time. Very impressive. Great back and forth. Great action by both women. But this, to me, is like, if I want to book my women's division, it's like these two are at the forefront of the future. It's like two of them, Sky Blue, Willow, Athena. That's my women's division. Right there. Maddie Rinkowski. There it is. That's it. Obviously, more people, but that's what i'm thinking here next we had angelico and serpentigo who are picking up some wins versus eli isom and cheeseburger so this is what i'm talking about where like people on dark and dark elevation actually shining in ring of honor because again if you've been to any dynamite and you've like seen angelico and serpentigo they've always been squash matches and now like they're not only getting time they're winning matches they're in storylines everything makes sense it's great so i'm liking this Like I said, I don't know why we just decided this is the tag team episode. I don't know where this is all leading to, but this was fun. I mean, I like that these people are actually winning and getting time. That's why why we have wrestling content, people. Love it. Next, this match was so good. Like, if the the main event never happened, this would have been my match of the episode. But my God, AR Fox and Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr. could go. He could freaking go. Don't let anyone tell you he can't. This match was really, really good. I think AR Fox is definitely due for some Ring of Honor singles gold. I mean, I know that I've been saying the last couple weeks that, like, Brian Cage is going to defeat Claudio, but I actually wouldn't be surprised if, like, after the whole thing with Saber and Joe, we're going to get to it. Like, whoever wins that feud, I would not be surprised if AR Fox is the one to defeat whoever somewhere down the line. Because he's been freaking killing it. He made it all the way almost to the 15-minute Time limit here, because obviously this is for the New Japan Pro Wrestling Television Championship. Those matches are only 15 minutes long. And very suspicious that they keep using Zack Sabre Jr. I feel like he's going to be involved with Forbidden Door and All Out. I could definitely see him being used for All Out. And I think Forbidden Door 
I think that's where we're going to do the TV title match. I think it just makes so much sense to have it at Forbidden Door. And I know that, like, that's kind of contradicting myself because I'm like, oh, Ring of Honor programming needs to, like, be its own thing. And, like, it shouldn't be, like, with AEW. But since it's a New Japan pro wrestling TV title, I'm okay with this because it's their title. But I think it's the perfect place to have the match. I just think the crowd's going to be there for it. I think... I think Sabre might win, but still, this was a great match. After the match, Sabre says that he has made the TV championship what it is today. He's the most successful TV champion in pro wrestling history. Joe comes out. He's like, not so fast, my dude. That ain't true. Now, here we go with Christopher Daniels. Comes out with Matt Seidel. And Christopher Daniels is like, look, I've been a TV champion before, but my buddy over here, he hasn't had the opportunity. And I think he should get the opportunity. So Zack Sabre Jr. lays out this challenge that I believe this happens next week. If not, it's going to happen on one of the tapings. That's going to be Sabre Jr. and Joe versus Seidel and Daniels. If Seidel and Daniels wins, whoever he pin, whoever Seidel pins, he gets to verse that TV champion. If Joe and Sabre win, they go goodbye. And then Sabre and Joe get the win or get to wrestle each other. I think we could hold off because obviously, like, by the time that episode airs, like, it will be the end of May anyway. And we're indoors next month. So I think we could build it up for a month. So I just think it makes the perfect sense. And that's where the match is going to be. If I'm wrong, I'm going to be low key disappointed because that's a pay per view quality match. And I don't think we can wait till July for the next Ring of Honor pay per view. I think it has to be a Forbidden Door. It should not be on an episode of. Ring of Honor TV. If I'm reviewing it on this show on our episode of Ring of Honor TV, I might be kind of upset. Not going to lie. <laughs> Next, we have the Gates of Agony versus Brandon Tate and Dalton Castle. This is the first time in so long we've not seen Brian Cage on this programming, which was kind of shocking. I was like, oh, hi. Where's Brian Cage? This, this was a squash, essentially. Um, and there was some controversy here. Apparently, Dalton Castle was the legal person. Um, I believe it was Khan who pinned Brandon Tate. This feud's going to continue, obviously. Gates of Agony win. <laughs> Next, we have Shaft, Ricky Gibson, and Eddie Pearl versus Shane Taylor, J.D. Drake, and Anthony Henry. This was another squash match. It was just to, you know, put over the new trio of Taylor, Drake, and Henry. And I did make this point, you know, if... Whenever they are ready to lose the six-man titles, I think Shane Taylor, J.D. Drake, and Anthony Henry are going to be the ones to defeat the embassy i just think that's what we're leading to i think it makes sense i think the momentum is shifting towards them anyway so i just think that's where we're heading next we had a very interesting interview with the righteous vincent and dutch say that Stu grayson is inspiring and that the dark order is holding him back you know the dark orders were brought him back to AEW. well what has he done since then he hasn't done anything and great and evil uno is like you know leave grayson alone who are you like why are you trying to do this and grayson's like you know what like no one speaks for me and he looks at vincent and dutch he's like i'm gonna give you one chance next week to see how this all works out, see if it could be a good thing for me or if it could be a bad thing. And the Dark Order is left stunned because they can't believe it. Like, oh, Grayson might leave. I think it makes sense for him to leave, to be honest. I think there's so much that you could do with the Righteous and Two Grayson. I think it's there. I think, you know, the six-man tag that's going to happen between Grayson and the Righteous versus Silver, Reynolds, and Uno. I think the singles matches that could happen. I think you could play a lot of this out. Obviously, again, talking about six-man titles, like if you're not going to do it for Henry Drake, and Anthony, oh, I can't even talk. <laughs> if you're not going to do it for Drake, Henry, and Shane Taylor, I think one of these two teams can obviously pick up those titles as well. But very interesting to see what's going to happen next week. I do think, like I said, I think Stu Grayson goes. I think it makes the most sense in the world. But obviously, I'm not the one writing for Connor. Next, and three women's matches made me also really happy about this episode. Ashley D. M. Boise versus the returning Mercedes Martinez. Welcome back. For those who didn't know, Mercedes Martinez has been injured for hella freaking long, and now she's back. Um, th This was good. I mean, D. M. Boise has been rather impressive on Ring of Honor TV. I know that she was offered a deal. I think she did accept it. It hasn't been, like, confirmed, but I'm going to assume she accepted it because she has a time front of music now, and usually when that happens, she signed her AEW contract. But this was just a way for Mercedes Martinez to kind of, like, go up the rankings to kind of, like, you know, prove herself to, like, get back in the title contention. Obviously, I do see them having that rematch somewhat down the line. Athena was not on this episode. I know she's not suspended. They didn't do that with her. <laughs> they did have a tie of Valkyrie. So... I'm assuming they might do that match. I don't think Mercedes is going to be the one to beat Athena. I think at some point, either going to be Sky Blue or Willow. 
or even like if they're gonna hold do this whole thing with Lady Frost, maybe it could be her. But this was a fine match. I mean, Mercedes looked good. Um, a lot better than before she was hurt because those a little so some of those matches were a little rough. So welcome back. Excited to be back. Um, yeah, yay Ring of Honor Women's Division, and this main event. Oh my god, I can't do it justice, and I'm not just saying it because of who my wrestling mentor is and who my wrestling parents are. Go watch it. This was great. I mean, I have heard so many great things from people at the tapings that were like, this match is so good, this match is so good, this match is so good. And my god, it was freaking good. Every single weapon you could think of, from chairs to ladders to tables to garbage cans to steel pipes, like, everything was used. There was blood. These four just have instant chemistry. They put everything out there. And when I tell you a fight without honor match was the appropriate stipulation for this match, this was just fantastic. The Kingdom put Andretti and Martin over so much, and they just freaking killed it. Go watch this match. I can't do it justice. It was so good. Like, low-key might be my match of the year very low key um we have a lot of, we have a long ways to go till then and i thought it was really special that like at the end in a fight without honor match the kingdom did do the code of honor and mike bennett looks into the camera and he's like you know this is what ring of honor is about like this is why we do what we do and he's right because that's what ring of honor built their bases off of it's the next generation of superstars and i don't necessarily know if the kingdom's job in ring of honor is to put others over but they've been doing a hell of a job of it. This match was great. And again, go watch it. <laughs> Overall, like I said last week, the tapings in Orlando are just so much better paced. A lot of the matches are kind of rushed when they're taping before and after Dynamite. And that's kind of my fear with Collision because I've heard that like the Ring of Honor tapings is going to be combined with Collision. If you're going to do it before Collision, you're going to be in the same situation where you're rushing a lot of the matches and a lot of the matches are going to be short, which is the thing with Dark and Dark Elevation was all those matches were like three minutes long. So that's my fear with this. But even this week, a lot of the matches were so much longer. Everything kind of made sense. We're kind of falling into place here. We're obviously looking for the next pay-per-view in the summer. I'm going to assume it's in July because I can't think of when else it would really be. <laughs> um, July makes sense. That's when they did it last year. And yeah, that's about it for me. So unfortunately, there will not be an episode next week because I'm actually going to Vegas for Double or Nothing. I fly out Thursday morning and I don't really know what my Thursday's going to look like. So I can't and I'm not like going with I'm going with a lot of my wrestling friends so I can't commit to an episode because I don't think I'm gonna I'm not bringing my computer and I don't think there's any way I could conceivably watch Ring of Honor so we'll be back in two weeks after Memorial Day for another episode of All Things Honor thank you for watching make sure to like subscribe do all that fun stuff and I will see you back in two weeks for episode 14 of Ring of Honor TV